Okay, so now you know how to mess around with the terminal. Let's continue our progress on Linux by starting and creating a simple development environment for Ruby. We are going to make sure that we can install Ruby natively and in the next lesson we'll learn how to install Ruby using a version manager. So for starters, I'm going to open the terminal. The terminal is inside the dash because I still don't have an icon for the launcher. Okay, while I was telling you this, the list of applications contains the terminal. That's great. Let's click on it and start setting up our environment. Let me just push this to the middle. And now for developing in Ruby, we need several different libraries. After all, Ruby requires a set of dependencies that we need to satisfy. Before we do anything, let's update the list of all the repositories in our system. After all, packages get submitted every single day and so before we install anything, let's type in this command sudo apt-get update. apt-get is the command that allows us to manage our packages and update allows us to refresh the list of repositories. You need sudo privileges to do this because it's a task for administrators. Let's type in the command and I've already typed in the password previously but you should be able to type in your own. It's going to update all of these different packages and then you're done. Remember that this just updates the entire list of repositories, not packages. So, now we can type in sudo apt cache search. We're going to search for all of the packages that have Ruby in its name. So you type in this command, press enter, and you see a load of different packages. Let me just maximize this a little bit and I'm going to scroll up until we see Ruby packages. There you go. What I want to do is I want to install this one. This is the interpreter for Ruby, so let's just install it. Let's type in sudo apt-get install Ruby 2.0. I believe that's the name of the package. Yes, it is. I'm going to clear the screen with Control L and press Enter. It is going to ask for many different dependencies. It requires the libraries for Ruby, YAML, and integration with RubyGems. Notice how it suggests that RubyGems and Bundler to be installed as well. That's actually a great suggestion. So I'm going to quit this command and I'm also going to install those packages. So I'll just type in RubyGems and Bundler right after Ruby. All of these three packages will be installed along with the dependencies. I'll press enter now and, a load, and notice how loads of different dependencies are now going to be installed. Instead of 4 megabytes to be downloaded, it requires between 19 and 34 megabytes of content. So I'll press enter and it will start downloading everything. We need to wait a little while before everything goes up. So let me just skip this part. Okay, everything is now set up. Let's see if we have Ruby installed. Let's type in ruby-v and unfortunately we still get Ruby 187. This is a problem in Ubuntu because Ruby packages in Debian and Ubuntu are outdated. There's really no support for Ruby in the official packages at the time, but that really doesn't matter as we'll be using Ruby 2.1 using a version manager such as rbmv or rvm, depends on your choice. So this really doesn't matter, we're just going to write a very simple script in Ruby. For now, all we need to do is to install a text editor. Most likely coming from Windows, you're used to something like a Notepad++ or Sublime Text or even a fully integrated environment, such as RubyMine or anything of the sort. I'm going to show you how to install Sublime Text, Vim and Emacs. You already have an editor called gedit. You can open it using the dash or just typing in gedit in the command line. It works the same. You can write anything you want inside this editor. It has syntax highlighting and everything. For example, let's switch plain text to Ruby right down below. So let me just give it a second. There you go. Let's choose Ruby. And now I can start typing in my Ruby code. 
I can type in a class called A and notice how it already has some coloring. I can type in an adder reader for my attribute and I can define my own method. I can define a method called B and type in my attribute and then for example call my attribute.c and pass in some values, a symbol, so my symbol, everything works. So we already have syntax coloring here. That's great. And you can actually save the current file wherever you want. I'm going to my home folder and create a folder called projects. I think that's about right. You are already inside it, so I'm just going to type in test.rb. I'm going to save it and notice how it already goes into the UTF-8 encoding and it uses the standard Unix line endings. Let's save. And there you go, there's our first Ruby file using a standard editor that comes by default in Ubuntu. I'm going to close this and I'm going to teach you how to install the remaining three editors. The first one I want to install is Vim. So you just type in sudo apt get install Vim or you can go to the Ubuntu Software Center. I'm just going to do that. Once you get there, you can go to the search bar and type in Vim. It will search for all the packages and you can install either the standard Vim on the console or you can actually install the graphical editor Vim. I'm going to install it since it contains both the graphical version and the console version. Let's type in the password really quick and Vim is going to be installed. Let's just wait a while and then we're going to take the chance and install another editor. Okay, GVim is already installed. Now we can open it. You can see that it already puts a button inside the launcher so I can just go ahead and click it. The graphical editor Vim is already installed and ready to use. If you know Vim, you can just type in, for example, colon E and I'm just going to open our test file. So projects test.rb. There's our class. Everything is working. Let me just quit the editor really quick and move on to a different kind of editor. If you're a fan of Emacs, for example, you can just type in Emacs. You can see many different versions. Let's try and install this one. I'm going to click install and notice how Emacs is being installed here it puts an icon to the launcher and once it's done we can just click on it. Okay, Emacs is already installed. We can click on it by going to the icon on the bottom left. It is going to pop up a graphical version of Emacs as well. So there you go. I don't really know much about Emacs but I'm just going to create a new file. Clicking on projects I can just type in emacs.txt and there you go, there's our new file. I can quickly start creating a file, so hello world. And then I believe it's control X S to write it and control X C to exit the editor. It seems it worked. Forgive me for not knowing much about this editor, but I think I managed to pull it through. So the last editor you might want to consider is Sublime Text. Let's see if it's in the official repositories and sadly it is not. We're going to have to go to the official website for Sublime Text and see if there are any options for installing it. I'm going to close the Ubuntu Software Center and pop up a browser really quick. Okay, it takes me directly to the login for Google, so I'm just going to type in Sublime Text. Okay, there you go. Let's go to sublimetext.com. You see there's a bunch of different aspects of it. We can download version 2 here, or we can actually download the beta. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to install the version for 32-bit. Look, there's even a specific version for Ubuntu. Let's go ahead and download it. And you can see that the file that's going to be downloaded is a Debian file. That's great, we already know how to handle these. So I'm going to keep it, and I'm just going to click on it. This will open the Ubuntu Software Center and install this package, the same way we did with the Google Chrome. Okay, there you go. Let's just hit install, type in our password. Oh, my mistake, I typed it wrong, so let me just do it again. 
And there you go, Sublime Text should be installing just fine. Let's just wait a while. Okay, Sublime Text is now installed. Let's go ahead and open it. Let's just close everything. I'm going to close the terminal as well. And now let's see if we can come up with the Sublime Text application. It's not in the launcher, so let's just type in Sublime. Oops, my mistake. There you go. Sublime Text is right here. Let's open it. And there you go. We have our own version of Sublime Text. Remember, this editor is paid, so make sure that you do so. Personally, I'm a fan of Vim, but for this purpose, I'm just going to stick to Sublime Text so you can have one window on the left side. Let me just do this, drag it to the left, and then I'm going to open a new terminal window on the right side. Let's type in term, open the terminal, and put it on the right side. Just drag the window to the right, and there you go, it works. Let's go ahead and open our file. I'm going to open a particular file, and I'll open test.rb. I'm going to delete this class since it doesn't make any sense at all. Instead, I'm going to create a new class called product, for example. It takes an add reader, for example, for title and description. Then we're going to define an initialize method that takes the title and the description. Inside, I'm going to type in title equals title. Whoops, I'm my mistake. I'm just not used to this editor. So title it should be. Let me just remove this and do the same thing for the description. So equals description. Close this and the class. Finally, we just want to put out product.new. We're going to pass in my product and a description. Ships in red and in blue. This should be okay. I'm going to print out the contents of this class. And for now, that's it. I'm going to save the file, typing in Control S, just the same way you would do in Windows. And now I'm going to the right side, navigate to the projects folder, so CD projects. And then inside we have our test.rb file. Type in Ruby test.rb. If everything goes okay, we should see the contents of the product class. And we do. That's great. Let's see some more detail. I'm going to switch windows back to Sublime Text. And instead of typing in the new product, I'm just going to assign it as a variable called product. So product equals product.new. And then I'll just print out puts product.title and puts product.description. Okay, I'm going to save this, go back to the terminal, and type in Ruby test.rb. And there you go. There's our first Ruby script. We have my product as a title and the description right down below. Okay, so this is a very basic environment for our soon to be development environment full on in Linux. In the next lesson, we'll teach you how to install Ruby using a version manager. It is actually a lot simpler to use a version manager for many different reasons. The main one is you can install gems the way you want to without actually requiring pseudo permissions and stuff like that. If you wanted to install a gem now, for example, let's type in red carpet. Red carpet is a gem that's available in Ruby gems that allows us to create markdown text and convert it to HTML. If I do something like this, I'm going to press enter and it won't allow me because I don't have root privileges. The gems are installed under the system and not under your home folder. You would have to do something like sudo gem install and then it would be installed. We don't want to do that as we want to make our development environment as easy as possible. Requiring administration privileges all the time is not as safe as using something in your home folder. You don't compromise the entire system and everything is enclosed in your project, in your folder. So we're going to do this in the next lesson. I'll see you soon.